welcome back to Lone Fox. Today I am doing another IKEA hack, so part two of my IKEA hacks. The video last time did absolutely insane. It has like 230,000 views, and I'll make sure to put it in a card up here in case you guys didn't see it, but it was so good, and I'm excited to have another one for you guys. These products are also equally as good, so definitely give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed, and please do not look at my hair. Like, I'm getting it re-dyed in like an hour, and I just didn't want to go through like washing it and fixing it for this video, so I'm just doing a quick intro before I run out so I can get this video up for you guys, but yeah, in the next video, my hair will be nice and fresh and good, so definitely don't look at it now, and I also wanted to ask you guys if you have any ideas for any future videos any ideas at all like do you want more ikea hacks what do you want to see on this channel definitely give me a comment in the comment section below because anything is going to help me out i want to create as many videos as i can for you guys and thumbs up your favorite ideas in the comment section too if you see any that you like and let's just get into these projects I'm so in love with this project. All I used was some cement, two of the IKEA blondables, some spray paint and glue. I actually didn't use the paint at the end. And so what I first started off by doing was mixing up my cement, which if you watch my cement DIY video, I go into more detail, but you just mix the cement powder from the hardware store with a bit of water until it becomes like a nice creamy consistency. And it's so easy to mix in plastic cups like this because you would actually squeeze the edges and sort of mix around the concrete mix. And then I put it in one half of my IKEA bowl. So these are just small little mixing bowls bowls are about $1.50 each so this project literally probably cost $3.50 mixed up a bit more of that um, cement and then make sure to tap all of the bubbles out to the bottom you can see after doing this for like maybe a minute or so a lot of the top becomes very very smooth which is which is exactly what we want and then you're gonna let it dry for about two to three hours and then use some e6000 adhesive which is great for metal to bond both of your little mixing bowls together like this so once those have bonded you're just gonna let them sit probably for a couple more hours. I did this project all in one day. And then I used a bit of brass spray paint to spray paint the entire object and sort of lock in the whole finished look. And it literally looks like a completely finished piece of solid brass. And I'm so in love with this. Put a candle on it or display whatever you want on it. So I created this alternative method using one of the shelf brackets from Ikea and one of the hanging plants along with some twine and scissors. So what I started off by doing was cutting six equal lengths of twine and I just give myself a random amount, whatever I think is um, a little bit more than needed. It's not expensive, so don't worry, you're not like wasting the actual twine. And I tied all six strands together at the bottom with a knot and then just cut off all that excess on the end. So this is gonna be underneath the potter and then I'm going to separate them into two strand sections and do some square knots. And this part, if you guys watch my macrame DIY video, which I'll make sure to link in the description box below, I really go into more detail on this, but all you're gonna do is do square knots all around the whole um, parameter of this circle and a square knot is essentially right over left, left over right, and then using the strands from each knot, you're going to take one from the right knot and one from the left knot and do another knot. So you're just kind of creating like this macrame uh, piece, and you can kind of see it here a little bit. It's super hard to explain on video, but you're just going to uh, like knot it up a lot enough until where you, when you put your pot in there and you pull up the strands, it actually cradles the pot. So that's exactly what it did here. It looked absolutely incredible, so nice, and then I just created a a nice large loop on the very top because I knew I wanted it to fit over the top of the shelf bracket without having to like attach any form of hook or anything. So I cut off that excess, slipped it on the shelf bracket, and you have your brand new like shelf hanging pot that looks insane. Last but not least, we have this abstract wall hanging, which I'm totally in love with. And what I used was the IKEA cork trivets, which are those cork pieces, um, some hot glue, cording, paint, and then some tape. So I laid them out first, just to sort of see where I wanted to tape them off. And I used just a tiny bit of scotch tape to create a line on each of them very randomly. I didn't do it um, with any like measurements or anything. And then I used my white paint just to paint along all of these cork edges. And the great thing about these cork pieces is that you get them in a set of three, and it's like $2.99 for three of them. So so this 
a project is another super affordable one and a great method for painting cork if you've never done it before because I personally hadn't done it prior is to really like stipple it with your brush so make sure to pounce up and down a lot to get it in all the little like nooks and crannies because cork is very um, like textured so there's lots of spots that you might miss or there might be like holes or gaps so just make sure to like stipple it up and down and then once it's all dry you can pull off your tape pieces and it reveals a nice clean line and then after that I laid them down on my table just to sort of get the placement for where I wanted them to go on my wall hanging. I really wanted to be abstract and geometric. So I took a little bit of this macrame cording and cut four equal strands, enough that would like attach them together. And this part's pretty self-explanatory. I just glued or hot glued uh, the strands on the left and right side of the backs of two pieces. And then I repeated it on the top as well. So uh, this is just gonna hold those cork pieces together. And you can do one in the center if you wanted to, but I thought that two on each side would just give it a little bit more of a stable look. And then I also reinforced all those hot glue edges with just a ton of hot glue to make sure that it was really nice and sturdy. Last but not least, created a tiny loop with a bit of cord at the top just so I could hang it and of course reinforce that as well. And then you are completely finished with your project. Oh,